Hi, everyone. So welcome to the Hakuna Matata talk. And this is Cynthia again. And thanks for always watching our videos. And if it's your first time, please um, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss on our next um, videos or episodes. Specifically today, we are talking, focusing on Uganda. And we all know that COVID has hit the world like the hardest, um, but it has hit each country differently. And uh, in this case, like I said, we are talking about Uganda and in Uganda, it's really, the situation is not good. And being that I'm from Uganda, my family is there. And like my sisters, my friends, like, and I'm concerned. And like every day I have to check in on my family. Are you guys okay? Are you doing okay? And, and so from there, I decided, hey, how about I catch up with people at home and, and I hear how the situation is down there. Today, I'm, I'm catching up with people from home, like home, I mean, Uganda, like to hear how the situation is. Because back here or here in Belgium, we, we just know what we see on, on, on the Internet, what we see on Facebook. But is it really the truth? Is it really what's happening? Because Uganda, I mean, is so big, and I, I believe that in, in every every region the situation is different. So today I'm joined by Charity. Hi, Charity. And Charity is um, in the northern part of Uganda. Consider Uganda, like in the northern part. In the, and then we um, joined also by JB, and JB is in the center of Uganda, in Kampala, basically. So hi, guys. Thank you for joining us. Uh, how are you guys? We are fine, uh, but of course not at the best, as we would have been without the lockdown. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, we are okay. You're managing. We are sure. Yeah, okay. Sure. <laughs> at least that's good. And Charity, how are you? How how are you there? Like, how generally? Yeah, no, sometimes, you know, like, uh, there's this African thing, like, when they say, how are you? You definitely say, I'm fine, because that's yeah, what we're used to saying. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, we are fair. I would say we are fair because there are things that are happening not the usual way, and um, I could be personally fine. But also because I have people close to me that are dying and also are sick, so that makes it really not be that answer that I would say I'm fine. Um, yeah, so I would just say fair. Yeah, because what bothers other people bothers me too. Yeah. I mean, for us, I can say I'm so far away from home, but I can feel it all the way from there. Because what happens, like on Facebook, like that's all we see, people who are dying. Like every day, I literally have to write every comment I make on, on Facebook the last week is just like condolence message. And that's really sad. Like if the, that's the only thing I type on Facebook the last week. Like every, that's what I see friends who are losing parents, who are losing sisters. And what I find really sad when I see people of my age, like dying, people who are younger than me, and that's, I can't even count. And for me, I, I, it's, I don't know, I, my heart is like broken. Like, I, I, I don't know. I, I, it, it's really, I feel like helpless when we can't help our people. And it's, it's really sad. So you guys, like, if like, how is the real situation there in the north? How is it like? I know you guys are in the lockdown, but like, how is it there? Yeah, so um, I mean, lockdown has never been fun. So coming from the previous experiences of lockdown, it yeah. was tough uh, because one, that's like both socially, um, economically, and even spiritually. Because sometimes you'd think that um, when situations are hard, you know, we will run to church or to, you know, religious people for comfort. But now the churches, you know, are not functional yeah. and people can't meet. And I think with this second lockdown, it's even more tougher because, you know, uh, previously, oh, there were fewer, a little bit fewer cases. There were possibilities yeah. that some families yeah. never had like anyone sick. By yeah. this time, um, almost every family has someone that is sick or has died of COVID because people had not yet recovered um, from the previous experiences yeah. of lockdown. Yeah. And now we're into the second one. So it's a bit tough. 
Yeah. And yeah, people are living actually more in fear of like what makes. And JB, how is it in Kampala? Yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, the whole thing is uh, uh, society is a bit disoriented now, you know. Yeah. You know, if you are moving in a straight line, uh, people are just uh, uh, sure of what is next. They aren't sure of what is the they are not clear on what's happening. They are not uh, sure of, uh, I mean, how am I going to get my next meal? How am I getting uh, my kids? What's going to happen to my kids? You know, such things are causing a lot of trauma to parents, uh, causing a lot of, of trauma in the society. And yeah. uh, I, I, I can imagine uh, a lot of uh, this is going to build up in the coming days, months, and probably years. And mm. uh, if no proper uh, measures are put in place. I think there will be another <laughs> pandemic created out of COVID, you know, COVID, which may not be to handle. Oh, it's a yeah. big challenge. But so, how do guys get along? How do they like buy food? How do they go to the markets? Like, what happens really? Do people are people allowed to go to the market? Because I know cars are not allowed, border borders are not allowed and you can't just move around. So how do people access food, like those in the cities who have to go to the supermarkets? How is it their charity? Yeah, so um, now in terms of access to food, it's yeah. quite tough, especially in the rural areas, because yeah. uh, people used to buy foodstuffs or even any household items from the you know monthly markets or weekly markets. So yeah. those are closed. Uh, which of course has led to kind of like a new opportunity that uh, people have opened like businesses in their homes uh, to, oh, yeah. to kind of bring services closer to people. But now, uh, because people do not know some of those yet, they do not like there's a challenge in um, accessing like things like maybe uh, sugar or soap or um, which is quite different from, you know, the town areas where there are many shops. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the little mm -hmm. shops around the trading centers is what people are kind of trying to utilize. Yeah. Uh, but it's uh, economically, it's really tough, um, tough. up country. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah but also it's a bit easier because yeah. people can walk to the shops. Yeah. It's not like in um, Kampala where it would be a long distance for some people to walk. Yeah. So it's it, actually, a little bit easier, though most of the items which were coming from like other districts uh, during the market days are not being accessed right now. Okay. And JB, how do people like access food since there's no transport allowed? Like how they can come Kampala, supermarkets are like a little bit far and some people live in all kinds of areas. So how do people do that in Kampala? Yeah, in Kampala, uh, I'll take uh, my own pa uh, personal experience. Uh, yeah. uh, one fact is uh, we don't have many cars on the roads, and those that are there, uh, major either they are carrying a sick person or they are running something they can't uh, drive with, or they have been permitted to move. Mm, yeah. And uh, we have many of us who don't have, for instance, cars. So we have resorted to uh, you either walk to the nearest shop or market, mm -hmm. or you use a trusted border border. But again, also, these are few because some the borders, <laughs> they are not easy to trust. So you don't want to give a your 100,000 shillings and then it disappears. It comes, back. <laughs> it comes back after the lockdown. <laughs> you don't want to do that. So, but the borders allowed to move? The border borders can move, but only carry luggage or ah, cargo okay. Ah, okay not carrying people ah okay i thought they were completely not 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 allowed to move ah okay they can't move beyond seven you know i, I mean five so so you have to plan within that time ah, okay. and you better you trusted border border or you walk there yourself As well. okay but then now my question is like the people that they, they, they are for example people in villages uh charity are they really are they well informed about COVID? Do they know what they have to do and what they don't have to do? Or 
I don't know how is it because maybe I could say in Kampala people could be more informed and more sensitized, but in the village, is it the same like in the north or is it the same? Do are people aware of COVID and the whole situation? Yeah, so people actually know uh, there have been um, since now we're in the second wave, so sensitizations have been ongoing both on the radio. Yeah. Um, and also yeah. people like on ground, different stakeholders besides the government also sensitizing people. Yeah. So most people now know what's happening, um, like how to prevent the COVID, but yeah. that doesn't change people's mindsets. Like, no. um, you know, the social distancing culture, there's still a, um, a cultural aspect to that. You know, how can I not have, you know, someone that have me uh, meeting, uh, you know, wearing the mask, it's making me yeah. uncomfortable. But mm -hmm. this time people are getting a little bit more serious with that. Mm -hmm. So which makes it, um, which makes it like, maybe people are more careful as yeah. compared to the previous one, which people yeah. thought was political. Yeah. But right yeah. now people are seeing people dying. Uh, yeah. You know, it's not about either the president or, you know, political leaders anymore. It's now real. People are yeah. seeing it happening. And so yeah. people are more careful as compared to before. But still you find people who are drunk and falling on each other and not masking um, because people are idle. So they are resorting to drinking. Yeah. Yeah. But in the first wave, people didn't believe that actually there was COVID. They thought it was like... It was political, like it was a lie that COVID didn't exist. But now, are they aware that COVID really exists? People, people actually now are believing it. Like I say, they have touched it. I would literally use yeah. the word "touched it" because if you see someone dying of it, then yeah. it feels like handy, like real. This is actually real. So it's yeah. quite different right now. It's no longer, you know, like a hearsay or. But still, I, I actually want my the people that even people who are learned who still think that it's not there, we can't rule out that percentage. So we'll say it's getting real, but there are people who still don't believe that it is. Um, yeah, in, in time, like different um, people, you know, with religious mindset that are thinking, yeah. okay, this is different. Yeah. Or, so different kind of perceptions that still exist. Yeah. Okay. And JB in Kampala, do you think like people are really aware and people are sensitized enough or are there still people who don't believe that COVID is there, COVID is real? Yeah, I want to uh, to concur with uh, charity. Yeah. I mean, during the first wave, uh, mm -hmm. many of us, uh, we thought this was just a uh, Kind of a joke. Yeah. We thought uh, uh, whoever was propounding the <laughs> the concept of COVID was just maybe joking. But uh, uh, and also this was further uh, people I did not experience deaths. Oh, ah yeah. 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 Experienced the you know the the sickness itself. Yeah. So he had that he uh, audacity to say uh, this is a joke. But now. With the second phase, uh, people have opened their eyes. They are like, oh, this thing is real. Many have lost relatives. Many have fallen sick and uh, they have experienced what it means when you have COVID. Yeah. So their eyes are opening up. And also I wanted to emphasize that the media has, uh, of course, played a big role in uh, opening the eyes of the people. Although sometimes it has done it in a <laughs> in a manner which again scares and uh, makes people to lose hope <laughs> yeah. and uh, get traumatized. I I need to bring out that uh, the media has played both a positive and uh, somehow negative role in yeah. uh, sensitizing people. Yeah. Like you don't want also to be. Yeah, for us here we yeah. rely on the media. What we see on the news, what we see on Facebook, is what we take. You know, if we can't, we don't get in like to talk to people like you and give tell us really what's happening. Like it's like there the yeah. world is coming to an end, and when the next day it's like everything is no more, and and it gets confusing sometimes. So if I may ask, like, how are people responding to the restrictions and the like, really the lockdown? Are they really 
at peace with it and saying, okay, this is what we need? Or are there some people who are like, no, we don't really need the lockdown? Uh, JB, how is it in Kampala? Because I know yeah, Kampala yeah. is more crowded. Yeah, yeah the, the, the thing is, uh, whereas uh, we, are, we are experiencing deaths, mm. uh, I mean, uh, people are trying to argue how far should the lockdown go, how should it be done, and mm. what should not be done, and by who. Because uh, like the lockdown we have, people were locked, we were locked down. There was no uh, preparation for the mass how how they are going to cope like yeah. it is in other countries uh, countries yeah. so just lock everyone for himself that is a bit scary and uh, yeah. when you move around uh, when you're taking you see people just caught up in their homes yeah. uh, without a clear uh, way forward you know yeah. they are under the mercy of the of the government you know Lockdown, stay at home, but stay at home, eat what, do what. You know? do it's what. a bit challenging. Eh? So you, you very soon you start getting uh, you know, probably resentments, you know. Oh, but of course, uh, those who have experienced it, they will understand, you know, why the lockdown. But uh, I'm sure there will be better ways of managing the lockdown. Uh, okay. JB, like in Kampala, uh, the kids are home. Uh, Schools have been closed almost a year. Had they... Had the schools opened like completely? I know some classes were open, but but were all schools yeah. like entirely open? Yeah. The, yeah. The thing is, uh, in a, uh, when when the COVID had entered the country in March last year, mm -hmm. uh, schools were closed. Yeah. And uh, we have been seeing a phased reopening of schools. Mm -hmm. No sooner had we moved to full reopening of schools than mm -hmm. the second phase came in. And, uh, yeah. As I talk now, all schools are closed. Looking at one of the effects of this lockdown, you know, yeah. you close schools, parents have just paid, parents have just paid their tuition. Yeah. And after a week, schools are closed. But remember, these parents are hardworking parents. They struggle to get the money. Mm. And now, after paying, Two weeks down the road, you close. close. Now, what happens next? And then, most importantly, I want to look at the kids themselves. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, being out of school, some of them are in classes. As they, are, they take one step forward, one step back. But from what I understand, there are some students or some uh, school uh, classes that have been home the entire year. So there are some kids like who are literally have been home for the whole year, now it's the second year they are still home. That's right. Many, many of them, because uh, even when they opened the schools in yeah. those phases, uh, a good percentage of them never reported. Never reported. They've yeah. never afforded to go back, raise go back. to go back. Yeah. And uh, of course, there are those few, those privileged ones who can yeah. access online lessons. I'm sure yeah. they are they are studying. Yeah, but then this is a minority. Yeah. yeah, it's a minority. So the whole system is a bit messed up, and uh, we hope it's uh, addressed and uh, children yeah. get back to school in whichever form. You know? Yeah, but I know it will also affect. It's a, uh, it's a bit traumatizing, you know, having kids at home for a year. But it also affects some kids because uh, I hear like some kids have got girls have gotten pregnant, they've dropped out of school. I don't know so many. I hear so many stories. Like yeah, it's, it's yeah. yeah. I, I have I have one 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 girl I've been sponsoring and she got yeah. pregnant. Yeah. So I just taken her back near one and then yeah. no sooner had I paid fees and uh, taken and one week in school, they locked down. So <laughs> you know. I know. So you you have kids uh, who you have to feed, yeah. and when whenever they are doing nothing, they are growing very fast. And then they're taken uh, advantage of by you know uh, men around, I mean, boys so around, you know. Doing nothing. E exactly. Oh, it's so so uh, that, that, it's challenging, and uh, but people still have hope. At least I, I have so much respect for people because when you talk to people, you hear like people are really hopeful. 
they are all looking forward to the situation passing and to the you know the next uh, i find it good that people are they are hopeful like they are not hopeless they are really hopeful we we need to look at the positive side you know yeah yeah uh, for instance you in uganda we have uh, over 70000 cases but uh out of these, less than a thousand have died. To me, that gives me hope. Many people have recovered, including, <laughs> including me. <laughs> I know, yeah. Do you think they have like a, a system where every person who dies of COVID is registered, or they just count a few that that, that are in the big hospitals? I, I think it's a. Uh, it's hard to tell given yeah. the biases with figures in, in a, you know in the statistics because uh, yeah. it's like saying the population of uganda is 40 some people say 42 43 you know it's a bit uh, hard to tell but uh, yeah. it gives a picture I mean, it gives yeah, a picture because uh, yeah. if you look around and uh, they tell you so and so and died you know of course even the numbers those numbers are contested you know as yeah. you have heard yeah, according to what I see on internet, on social media, is that actually true? That the most people dying have been 40 years of age? I think it's a mix, and uh, I wouldn't want to say they are mainly young people. You see also there are old people, really, who are you know, old people are dying. I, I, I wouldn't want to say it's majorly young people. Charity, yeah. you, want to, you, you want to say something on that? Yeah. So I think from my experience, um, it's I've had, of course, like even children dying, but majority have been eld like a little bit like about fifties, like people who have other illnesses. Yeah. So once yeah. the you know COVID comes in, yeah, it, you know the immunity is already compromised. But yeah. I've also had of like you know expectant mothers who are dying, just lost like um, friends, um, just. A few days ago yeah so people getting it when they are pregnant already the immunity is compromised and um yeah so either both the baby and the mother dies or the child survives and the mother you know goes so it's 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 been a balance but i will say for me the people in my close relations that i know have been more of elderly people so it's been a balance yeah yeah, either way, it's, uh, yeah, it's a sad situation. It's very scary, like literally scary. Like, for example, we are supposed to come home in two weeks. And like, for me, what cares me? I, we already canceled our trip, but everyone says, don't come, don't come. I'm like, is it that bad? Because yeah, like literally everyone, even my own family, they tell me, no, do not come. You should sure? Really? No. <laughs> So I'm like, yes. um, is it that bad? Like, yeah, but everyone is still You should it. come. Yeah, so actually there are people that are coming in yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. and are not being infected. But I think what scares people from coming uh, is that time when we had a wave of like people coming from India. So yeah. in our yeah. village mindset, we think this is coming through the aeroplane. So anyone coming in might carry it with them. But <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of a scare. Well, I know we have like high cases right now in Uganda. Yeah. Um, also, we know that there were situations elsewhere. Yeah. So again, that's something that it's going to take time. So I like that uh, people are now starting like to, you know, sensitize people, like give psychosocial support of like, we need yeah. to stop worrying. Yeah. And also we have like people dying, not even dying of COVID, but because of, you know, worry. But any any illnesses, personally, um, I think I had like some chest pain and I was like, oh, I hope it's not COVID and I'm so scared until when I had to do checkups and, you know, confirm that it's not COVID and even did scans. But psychologically, you know, there's that yeah. you know, worry. Yeah. Yeah, so, we have, yeah, too. Yeah. Every time you have something small, you think you, you, you connect it directly to COVID. But in most yes. cases, yeah, it's yeah. not a yeah, so we I, have a dying of other illnesses, but they think also it's COVID. So also not all the numbers that are being reported of uh, death are COVID cases. So again, that's where the balance is not coming in with uh, social media, like we've been saying, 
And also we have so many people actually that have healed. Like I have so many of my very close friends and they have families that have been sick, even in my own household. Um, yeah. how we've had sick people, but the, you know, as we take the remedies and medication and people are getting better. So sometimes when you take it, that's why you're getting the picture of, oh, it's terrible and yeah. all that. But no one is reporting the cases of people healing. We actually have so many. So from my own experience of people close to me, I know more people that have healed than the people that have died. But that doesn't come out of social media, which to me, I feel like sometimes we are at an advantage that we have lots of you know natural remedies that we can do here as compared to other countries that you know cannot access things like this so exactly. yeah that yeah. don't even know about it yeah but that's that's at least that's uh how can i say that that gives yeah. me like a different kind of feeling like i was really scared especially when people i keep saying please you better not come now things are really bad and hearing like from different from you guys and i'm i am now my 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 mind has changed. I'm more, I'm more hopeful and more positive that things will get better and things are actually not as bad. Yeah, as yeah. yeah I, want, I just want to emphasize Charity's point because uh, wow. the yeah. thing is, yeah. uh, people are. No, listen, uh, she talked to so many points. I just want to emphasize one point. The point is, uh, uh, People have people have been traumatized by the messages, scary messages on the media. Yeah. Now, out of that, they feel frightened to have more people coming because it, them telling you not to come, it has two ways. Yeah. They either don't want you to come and you fall sick, <laughs> or they don't want you to bring your strength. You no. Know? <laughs> so they have to keep you off. <laughs> now, <laughs> the point of of hope is this you know <laughs> we have so many recoveries happening yeah. uh, so uh, to me by virtue of the fact that uh, we can overcome this there is hope and that's why i say you should come you shouldn't be scared just come and keep the soaps <laughs> no, really, like, like everyone, they are the first ones to tell me do not come do not come they believe that the one coming from outside countries is, <laughs> is, is, is it worse. <laughs> yeah, my brother actually told me, he told me, you know, if you come and you go to the village, people will be running away from you. I said, what? He said, yes, because they think people who come from abroad or wherever, they have COVID. Yeah, so. Along the way, people have been traveling and mixing up kids from, sick kids from the schools. Yeah. Have come and mixing up in the buses, in the bus park. You know, you saw the pictures of how the bus park was full. So yeah. just yeah. imagine how was it easy to social distance. So the fear is actually like um, valid at some point because, you know, people coming from Kampala and taking, you know, the virus to the villages, the villages. and also people coming, you know, from other countries and, you know, coming in. Um, it, uh, with the vi virus, and that's how people believe, you know, we had, you know, this other um, Indian um, variant. So yes, yeah. people are right to, you know, have the fear, but that doesn't mean uh, that, you know, people can't come in because at this point we need to get to learn how to cope yeah. with COVID. And um, it's going to start by, you know, people accepting so we need to accept that it's here. But how, when Cynthia comes in, how can I still meet her? And then we, you know, we, yeah, we still, I still stay safe. Yes, but I, I still able to, you know, relate with her and socially, you know, interact. Yesterday, um, I was meeting my friend who is caused um, treating COVID. I felt so bad because she, she shed tears because um, she felt I was in a hurry going somewhere. But she felt like I had not entered her house because she's well, she um, positive, positive, which is not the case. I kept telling her, you know, uh, right now we need to learn how to, you know, cope with this. Yeah, just my friend, so and I, yeah. yeah, I can come and we chat. You see, I just pray that uh, media yeah. can start yeah. preaching, you know, coping mechanisms. Yeah. It looks like media is like, yo, people are dying, oh, yeah. you know. The whole country is dead. And 
But from what I see on social media, or from also from the first wave and now the second wave, not much has been said from what I see online on what should you do in case you have COVID. That I haven't seen it anywhere online. All I see is uh, sanitize, wash your hands, mask up, and do the social distancing. That I've seen it everywhere. I hear it everywhere on radios, Ugandan radios. I see it everywhere on, 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 on social media platforms. But I haven't seen anywhere where they say when you have COVID or when you test positive ABCD. I haven't seen that much. Is that is it the same there? Do you uh, have? Uh, I don't know. How is it there, JB? I, I, I Cynthia, I think uh, I think that last bit of, of uh, your your, your, your point is uh, probably I've not just seen it, but uh, I think the ministry has really come out, Ministry of Health, has started coming out telling people if you have this, you can use these, uh, you know, remedies, you know, and really I commend it for that. Before they were propelling uh, soaps, only soaps for people, yeah. don't do this, don't yeah. do this, don't go here. But uh, uh, Charity probably will agree with me, uh, maybe you have also seen this. The ministry has come out uh, yeah. to tell people, please, yeah. in case you have this for children, do A, B, C, D. For adults, do this, you know. Yeah. Uh, these numbers, you call for A, B, C, D. So to me, uh, this is being done. My only uh, worry is, mm -hmm. uh, whereas people have embraced the, these uh, herbal uh, medicines, uh, you know, herbal medicines are... Uh, they are not well prescribed. Yeah. <laughs> That's another one. Uh, herbal remedies, <laughs> people don't have the right to talk. <laughs> people, people are taking marijuana, you know? <laughs> they don't no, know how much to take. I see. People are taking... Yes. Yeah. People are taking lots of stuff. They don't know no, how much they should about. take. <laughs> see, yeah, yeah. Happened. this is happening. <laughs> People are smoking <laughs> marijuana so, because they believe it heals COVID. They, or it makes they drink it, they drink it, you know. They you drink the it. leaves and you mix it, you know. Yeah, so that's also has been from... Yeah, it's part of the concoctions. Wow. We've not had any medical people come out to advise uh, on herbs. And I think for me, again, my worry is, is every herb we are taking okay? Because I'm just worried that we might get other issues from the too many herbs that we're taking because we're just mixing anything. Anything that seemed to have been harmful way back right now, it's okay. Because okay. it seems like I think Uganda has to legalize my marijuana. Cause, Is marijuana everywhere to be found? Like yeah, people are taking it in places. Now it's part of, you know, one of the hubs that, you know, internet is showing us as one of the, you know, hubs to use. So yeah. now I'm just also wondering, I'm like, is that okay? We're yeah. not having like health professionals coming on to tell us, is this okay or this is not okay? Yeah. So yeah. because everyone is quiet, the assumption is marijuana is okay. So we are now all taking weed. In, but in is that forms. easy to find? <laughs> is the marijuana easy to find? Actually, I don't know. Actually, the earlier the area they come out and uh, sensitize people on what to take and in which proportions, we are bound to have bigger problems. And actually, okay. I was talking to one nurse and she was telling me that uh, people are starting to have complications because, you know, exactly. most of these things are toxic. Yeah, of Some course. of these things are toxic. Yeah. And then uh, they are taking them in, a, in the wrong doses for wrong reasons. They, are, they have not tested. And uh, the other thing is uh, this self-medication. Yes, I think every home now has like a port yep. for herbs, and, and, you know. Like, and, and, we are all then, herbalists you see, now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's true. We are all herbalists. <laughs> yeah. when, when you're drowning, you hang on anything, you know, even uh, a, 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 a what? A grass. Eh? You hang on it. Eh? And that's what's happening. Now, my worry is... Uh, my worry is people are taking these medicines, ignoring, because uh, anything they feel, they think it's COVID. Now they are ignoring either pre-existing conditions or uh, new conditions which are not COVID. That's where the trouble is. And yeah. attaching everything to COVID, every symptom. Yeah, I think for me, Cynthia, it goes back to your question, I think before I went off, like when you're yeah. talking about the lockdown, 
So yeah. that's where the challenges of lockdown come in because it's so hard to access uh, like better medical care or yeah. like if anyone needs uh, like, you know, attention, medical attention or needs checkup, most of these like good health care services are a little bit far from where people live. So it becomes quite challenging because the only option during lockdown is for you to go to a nearby clinic. Um, and also, of course, the, the government opened, like if the motorcycles are taking people to like hospitals, it's OK. But then um, again, there's limited uh, transport in yeah. especially yeah. the rural areas. And actually, some of these, um, um, like, of course, the lockdown um, mm -hmm. regulations affect so much people in the rural areas as compared to urban centers, because if you can find at least good clinics yeah. in uh, walking yeah. distances, but then in the villages, it's, you know, quite challenging. But also, even the medical people are scared of what is happening. So you don't expect to find, like, serious people at... Uh, government health facilities uh, yeah. because you know people are also while you would think that people would be there in some of the clinics there are no medical personnel uh, and also because of you know like the what has been happening people are dying also medical people have been dying so seeing some of their colleagues dying uh, some people are scared yeah. yeah so yeah those are some of the challenges you know the lockdown and you know, thinking about like, you know, expectant mothers. Yeah. By the time they get, you know, to transportation, and then people are in fear before you yeah. get the patient on the bike. Then they get you, you know, past time for curfew. Uh, the masks are they affordable? Like people in rural areas, can they afford them? Are the masks everywhere to be found or everywhere to be bought? Like how how is that? How where do people get the masks, especially in villages? Where do they find uh, them? <laughs> Cynthia, <laughs> for I, God's sake, in the villages, it's a different story. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Uh, like, first, huh? yeah, you see, yeah, uh, in town, uh, the issue to do with masks. Of course, you heard about the government distributing masks. Masks. Uh, yeah. Actually, I got I got two, which are. Uh, I have, I've never put on because uh, I bought mine, which I think they are better. <laughs> yeah. But uh, the issue of masks, first of all, the, uh, the fact is they are uncomfortable to, to many people. But then because of the, the standard operating procedures, you are forced to put them on. Yeah. And uh, it's so much in, in towns and, uh, of course, suburbs where there is uh, enforcement. Now, when it comes to deep in the villages, it's a bit challenging. Uh, I've been to many villages. Uh, masks really, uh, they are not, uh, <laughs> they are not something really they are taking seriously. Can they access them? Are they there and, to be and, accessed? Uh, of course, at a cost, like in Kampala here, you have to buy at least uh, 1,000, 2,000, yeah. depending on the quality. How is it there yeah. in the north? Like, are masks to be ac are they accessible? Can people afford them? Where do they find them? Are they even there on the market? So in in the market, uh, when the markets, um, like the, some shops have stocked them, but not everyone can afford them. Uh, but also some tailors have tried to make something that kind of looks like a mask. Uh, I think the only thing is that when you see what has been going on, like showing the masks which are effective and those that are not effective, that should be the question that like, should we say people in the village are more at risk because they can't afford uh, these other um, recommended masks. And uh, yeah, so also besides even affording those, because remember they get dirty easily, so they are so hard to maintain, but it's also not something that people in the villages can sustain buying those, you know, kind of those medical masks all the time. So I, I just feel like people in the village are just uh, protected by God because even the masks are not uh, the cloth <laughs> masks. Good. Yes, the cloth masks are not uh, masks are not the recommended type, but that's what they can access. That's what they can afford. It's easy yeah. to wash and reuse. Uh, mm -hmm. But also, I think um, the advantage is that somehow they are kind of naturally social distanced. They are not as crowded as people yes, in urban areas. Yeah. If you stay yeah. in your home, you don't need a mask. 
Yeah, yeah. So it's um I think that's been um one of the ways of God trying to protect them, but I, I feel like they're really more at risk. Um and of course the, the social distancing aspect is a challenge, like we say, once people get to the trading centers and excited, no more masks, no more. <laughs> They would say they are sanitizing already, but yeah, so looking at some of those factors, it's just it just seems like really God is protecting them. But also, like we say, yeah, that, uh, the, yeah. the um, sensitizations on over the radios and also, you know, people like uh, down on ground, different stakeholders sensitizing people, they are helping, um, yeah, in uh, reducing the risks. All right. So before we finish our chat, uh, JB, what would you like to tell people? Or is there some message you'd like to give to people who, I don't know, anything you would like to say to our people in your yeah, uh, what, yeah, before I say that, one thing I wanted to say is, uh, you know, mm -hmm. if we are to win this battle against COVID, mm -hmm. I think uh, the media has a greater uh, role to play yeah. in, in uh, helping people understand seeing leaders they are masking and spacing after they go for a photo they are you know they are they have removed the masks you know yeah uh, that double kind of standard is not really yeah. building confidence in the people yeah. you can't you can't no. believe you know and it is not until this uh whatever the second phase came in that people again woke up like here in kampala people had abandoned the masks i mean it was like uh, we had gone back you know to normal uh, until the second wave and uh, the second lockdown came uh, it's until that, that people now again, again. Yeah. And started putting on masks. We 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 need to have sincere uh, sensitization. Yeah. Uh, we should not uh, uh, scare people. Yeah. COVID has been there. Many people have gotten sick and many have healed. You know. Yeah. And yeah. it is manageable. Yeah. So people need to be educated on this. Yeah. And they reduce on the trauma that is being caused by uh, so many mixed messages. And yeah. then I want to highlight, uh, I'm so uh, so much into uh, the media. Uh, when you look at, for instance, you know, uh, Facebook, you know, they have played a bigger role in uh, keeping, you know, information. You know, decision making is made when people are informed, you know, well yeah. informed. But you yeah. find there is a lot of blockage. You can't talk about something. You can't talk. You can't question. To me, this is unfair to the to the masses. You know, but, people yeah. should be able to get information and they discern. You know, they choose what is good, what is right. It's right. Yeah. And the governments, our people, should come up to back up the truth. You know, but yeah. where the truth is hidden from the people, people will continue questioning, <laughs> and they will not do what you tell them, even if it's for oh. their own good. Otherwise, yeah. as I conclude, I I encourage people to to do what they can, look for information, make a decision, and uh, choose. Yeah. Now, the other thing is the vaccine. You know, uh, we have so many vaccines around, and uh, one thing I expect to talk about is uh, people no, no, are saying no. that the people who are dying are the ones who have been vaccinated. You know, <laughs> many really? people are dying. <laughs> Those myths, eh? they need to be clear. I haven't died. I'm <laughs> Otherwise, yeah. Otherwise I haven't so died. many people are saying, I'm not going back for the second one. I'm not going so back for, I'm not going the for the I, I asked my mom, have you gone for your second vaccine? She said, no, I haven't gone, but I'm scared. People are saying uh, people are dying from the vaccine. I said, yeah, mommy, that's <laughs> not true. Like, really? So People are scared to have a second vaccine because they think they will die from the vaccine. Yeah, Charity, have you got for one? Yes, I did. I did, and I haven't died. So, uh, Cynthia, ah, have you gone for I'm one? Not dying. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, I did. But I told, I also had to tell my mom and yeah. my sister, look, even people here have have some uh, complications after, but they just fall sick. But, oh, but it's normal. I mean, I, I got, I already got my full dose. Yeah, so for me, yeah, like how people, you know, usually say to serve a government at Yambe. So I'm, I, I'm just thinking, like at this point, you know, the government needs to, you know, do a good job again. Mm -hmm. I know they've already been doing that sensitizing people, but mm -hmm. we need more education. Again, the reason why people would talk um, ill about vaccines is because people are hearing. That, and they're not you know, 
yeah, you know, people are saying we are not getting vaccinated because they they cause this because they do that. Um, yeah. I think there are things there's some there, there's more information that people didn't get to know. Things mm-hmm. like how you know our bodies will react differently mm-hmm. to these vaccines. All those are not details that sometimes people get to understand. So the yeah. moment someone hears, oh, my friend had a headache, oh, I'm going to get a headache too, oh, the government needs to continue, and other stakeholders, because besides the government, uh, there are other, you know, uh, people in the health uh, sectors that are, you know, supporting and educating people. Let's not give up on educating people mm. uh, on interventions and, you know, uh, precautions, of course, and also how to go through the COVID um, situation. And then the other one would be asking, of course, the whole world, let's not stigmatize people with COVID. This is this one, I think, is more than the stigma for HIV. Um, <laughs> people are really, like, throwing away. So this is why people, again, um, you know, getting frustrated and dying even before they would die because if people feel abandoned. There are so many ways we can reach out to loved yeah. ones who are sick. Uh, how about texting? How about video messaging or you know uh, voicing messages to them and just letting them know that you care through the caretaker? I know again someone will say that's not you know an African thing and what, but I think COVID is also here to teach us some teach of the us. ways that we need to change our mindset. So many things happened in the previous lockdown. Uh, you know, child protection issues were on a rise. Yeah. Um, with the domestic violence, you know, people, you know, my husband and wives are not used to living <laughs> together. And so together like people, 24 are, seven. <laughs> people are tired of each other and battling yeah. each other. And yeah. just so domestic violence being the order of the day. And then yeah. the children are there. So just think about like up in the north where, you know, people live in a hut. And, you know, so you have all the kids there. And then, yeah. you know, the, the husband and wives are fighting. The kids are watching all these um and then the next minute you know the kids are you know starting you know even to sleep with one another this thing we've had lots of incest cases during these lockdowns uh many um pregnant you know teenagers and being even pregnant by you know teenagers like young boys themselves so there's there's so much going on and i feel that government cannot manage this by themselves i would like to add something about what you just said about the kids getting pregnant you know at a young age and stuff we just talked about it a while ago with the with jb and it's kids like they have been home like some kids have been home for an entire year and now they are going into the second year without going to school without having anything to do you know and I think that's also frustrating for the kids. And it's, they don't know what to do anymore. Like, yeah, in, in in the village where I also have some projects, there are some girls who are like pushing to learn some skills and stuff. And at some point, some got pregnant. Yeah. And could they continue with the with, with the with the, you know with the program? And um, what can you do? Like they were just home for two months and two of them didn't didn't come because they got pregnant. You know, yeah. So, so yeah. this is yeah, this is why I was saying now the government has to let in at least other psychosocial support programs come in because mm-hmm. again you find that this there's need for like some organizations have structures on ground that can continue yeah. uh, educating these people on you know life skills, you know, yeah. things, you know, decision making, things like that, but yeah. also counseling. Um, and you know, guidance for for these young people and even parents because parents are also frustrated and some of them end up even chasing them from home. Like, oh, you're already even big, just go and get married. You're wasting my yeah. resources. You know, you're giving me a headache. You, you know, so parents are frustrated. Yeah, children are frustrated. So one is like, why don't I, you know, being abused every day at home by my parents, why don't I just go and get married? married. And maybe when I get pregnant, that's when my parents will allow me to go and get married. So there are so many social issues to this. And while we are looking at the health aspect of COVID, uh, also we need to think about the social aspects and and, and lay strategies and um, how to support people during even this second lockdown. So closing yeah. everyone out is really not going to be helpful. The, the government is already overwhelmed and it's not going to really help. Yeah. 
and people less continue, you know, masking up and social distancing. Uh, yeah. Of course, less. Of course, we social distance physically, but not at heart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here. yeah. We didn't need to continue. It's not, it's not easy. And, yeah, and encouraging other people also to do that. Um, yeah, and supporting. Let's support the people that are sick. Ah. Praying for them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, but masking. Yeah, here we've like we've been masking up for a year, more than a year, and now. Mm. The situation is changing. The situation is changing that before we had like to wear a mask every city, like wherever you go, and we've done that for a year. And now the situation is getting better. People don't have to mask up like outside in the streets or in the city. And guess what happened? Like when you go now on the street without a mask, you feel like you've forgotten something. Like I have my that's how it's been here. Like when I go and I don't have a mask, I'm like I forgot something, and then I remember yeah. ah, I can go on the street without a mask, you know. But we be like yeah, we'll get used. Like JB mentioned that ah oh, yeah, some people when they put a mask, it's difficult. But you get the more you wear a mask, the more you get used to it. Trust I think the most important oh. thing here is just to remind us uh, why are we doing that? I think yeah. it goes back. You know, previously we did it for the government. By yeah. this time, we need to know that we are doing it for ourselves. So yeah. just reminding us that it's for our own good. Um, if, you, if you get the disease, it's your body that pains, not the government body. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay, so you guys, yeah, I would like to really thank you so much, so much for making the time. This means so much to me and I guess to people who watch this and, you know, like, we had like I had to know what's happening. Of course, I was personally relying on the media and maybe a few people at home. But then everyone tells you something different, and like, but what is really happening? So you guys, thank you so much, and uh, please take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and keep and do the job also. Sensitize the people. You know what I mean? Yeah, because we're doing. Yeah. We're trying. <laughs> Yeah, yeah we, we are. We're trying. It will pass. We will get thank you. Thank you, know? you, Charity. Thank you. Charity, you thank you so that. much. And, and you're doing a great job up there. You know, JB, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah, we will catch up sometime. Thank you for inviting us to chat about these issues. No it's good problem. to talk about things that concern us. Yeah. Yeah. No, but for me, it was, I felt I should do it. I should hear the truth and, and hopefully someone will watch it and say, okay, this is actually what is happening because the media, yeah, you don't get to hear the real thing that is happening.